Welcome to day one of lesson 12. So we're looking at Julius Caesar carrying on and we're ready to start act three this week. So let's return to the streets of Rome. The Ides of March have arrived, which is the middle of March, and Caesar makes his way to the capital. The conspirators strike him down as planned. Their triumph did not last long, however, as in a misguided effort at reconciliation, Brutus allows Mark Antony to take center stage at Caesar's funeral. Mark Antony turns out not only to be a loyal follower of Caesar, but also a brilliantly manipulative speaker who subtly coaxes the people of Rome into a frenzy. Rather than hailing the return of liberty and freedom, the crowd vows revenge and sends the conspirators fleeing in terror. So, um, a little bit more about Act 3. You should remember from your previous lessons that Shakespeare's plays have five acts, which divide up the plot into more or less equal chunks. So the break between acts allows the actors to change clothes and the audiences to take a little break. In a tragedy, the acts are organized in the following manner. So Act 1 is the introduction and the exposition. So it presents the setting, the main characters, and the central themes. Act two is the development and the rising action. So the conflicts and problems arise in the play. Act three is the climax. The major decision is made from which there is no turning back. Act four is the denouement or falling action, which presents events towards an ultimate conclusion. And act five is a conclusion or resolution or catastrophe which maybe major characters die, or it's just the end of the story there. So this is act three, which is the climax. So note the major decision that is made from which there is no turning back. So the tension mounts as we enter the third act. Caesar ignores the warnings of the soothsayer and his wife and proceeds to the capital. He expects to be crowned as emperor, as Decius has told him, as you read Act and watch Act 3 this week, see if it reminds you of Jesus' final days before the crucifixion. Remember how the crowds welcomed him and praised him just a few days earlier? Notice how easily their loyalties were swayed. So I'm not trying to imply that Caesar was righteous by any means, but nevertheless, it's a good comparison of how easily public opinion can be swayed, and we do know that it can happen. So this act contains some important speeches. If you look back at the cast of characters at the beginning of the play, you will say, see that Artemidorius, the citizen who tries to warn Caesar of danger in scene one, excuse me, <clears throat> lines three to eight, is identified as a teacher of rhetoric, the art of public speaking. Rhetoric was held in high regard in ancient Rome. Keep this in mind as you read and listen to Brutus's and Mark Antony's eloquent speeches in this act. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> you will find one of the most famous lines in literature in this act. So we wanna look at three types of dramatic speeches. So an aside is a brief comment a character makes that reveals his or her thoughts to the audience or another character. An aside is heard only by the audience or the character to whom it is directed. So if you think about an aside, you think, oh yeah, remember, remember, that, remember this, or oh yeah. Um, so you're kind of talking to yourself almost, oh, or you might say, oh, here we go again, right? So it's only, um, it's not meant for the general um, cast of characters to hear. And it probably could be done maybe in a really quiet manner or just um, when only a few characters are present. So a soliloquy is a longer speech in which a character speaks as if to himself or to herself, but it's not just a comment, it's a speech. So you may remember Juliet's soliloquy from Romeo and Juliet. So during a soliloquy, the speaker is usually alone on stage, but even if other characters are on stage, they do not hear that character speaking. Cassius's speech in Act 1, Scene 2, lines 308 to 322, is an example of a soliloquy. Then a monologue. It is important to note that Shakespeare shows us the truth about a character by what he says 
Oh, sorry. Ah, sorry. I went on ahead there. A monologue. So a monologue is a long and uninterrupted speech by one character. So Antony's speech in this act, beginning with the famous friends, Romans, countrymen, is an example of a monologue. So back to what I was saying before. It is important to note that Shakespeare shows us the truth about a character when he, what, in what he says in his asides and soliloquies. Characters can hide or lie, hide the truth or lie in monologues, but they don't in asides or soliloquies. So if you're looking for the truth in what a character says, Listen to their asides and their soliloquies, not necessarily to their monologues. So remember that as you're going through um, the lesson for today. Okay, so in your assignment today for week 12 or lesson 12, there are some vocabulary and some comprehension and critical thinking questions and some work on dramatic speeches, such as asides, soliloquies, and monologues. Okay, so that is all for day one.